this is your Barbados Today evening news update for Tuesday, March 1. So glad you could join us. Prime Minister Mia Motley and her CARICOM counterparts got down to business on pressing regional issues at their 33rd intersessional meeting in Belize today. CARICOM Chairman, host Prime Minister John Brasenio, told his colleagues the summit was taking place as the region faces untold challenges, even as citizens press for a better standard of living. We meet at a time when unprecedented and existential challenges coincide with our citizens' expectations for relief and prosperity. The international climate is riddled with crises, conflicts, and suffering. Every country, every region is managing, they say, unprecedented challenges with, they say, inadequate sources. The global unraveling is occurring against the backdrop of what appears to be a new Cold War. As we meet, Russia has invaded Ukraine. This is a flagrant violation of international law. We condemn it in the strongest terms, this unjustified invasion. There must be an immediate cessation of hostilities and immediate and unilateral withdrawal of all Russian troops from Ukraine. We call for all to respect their obligations under international humanitarian law. Outgoing CARICOM Chairman and Tegan Barbados Prime Minister Gaston Brown urged countries to move forward with the implementation of the CARICOM single market and economy that allows for the free movement of goods, skills, labor, and services across the region to help fast track economic recovery. We can no longer afford the luxury of delaying approval of key instruments such as the financial services agreement, investment policy, incentive regimes, and the development and regulation of a regional securities market. The full operationalization of the CSME is required for the transformation of our economies and to fight for a robust post-COVID recovery. The family, friends, and loved ones of popular Barbadian politician Dr. Don Blackman celebrated his life today at the chapel of the Coral Ridge Memorial Gardens. The island's top officials attending the service included Deputy Prime Minister Santia Bradshaw and her cabinet colleagues, Chief Justice Patterson Cheltenham, former Prime Ministers Sir Lloyd Erskine Sanford and Frundell Stewart, current Democratic Labour Party President Steve Blackett, former Finance Minister Chris Sinkler, and other figures. Delivering the eulogy, Dr. Aubrey Armstrong, Blackman's longtime friend, told the gathering of an intelligent, bold politician, professor, and diplomat who loved to serve others and connect with people. He, he had this ability to look down the road and see the scene with street sense and a social sense of being with people. And the people, the, 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 the servers and the, and the kitchenette and the kitchen and so on at the Hilton in Barbados, they're all watching. The people at IHOP in Florida, they're all watching. They all cried. Not because he gave him a tip, because he was a real person to all of them. And the people in the Ivy who came on Sunday, that's right, he was real to them. Abdul Pandor, also a close friend of the former government minister and MP for St. Michael East, said Blackman was the greatest leader Barbados never had. Don has his challenges with both political parties. But Don knew when to leave the arena of elective politics. I never felt for one moment that Don missed the limelight that was associated with being a parliamentarian or being a minister. He lived his life after politics in a most enjoyable and wonderful way. I shared most of that time with him as well. No, Dawn cared very much for the poor and the senior citizens. His legacy will always be intact with the establishment of the Home Health Program. Who would ever forget that image in the news media where you had in 1991, you had this old lady and she was butting her head against a concrete wall, crying aloud, Dawn has left Barbados. 
Now for the latest COVID-19 update, 220 people, 105 males and 115 females were diagnosed with the virus on Monday from the 1,265 tests carried out by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases comprised 43 persons under the age of 18 and 177 who were 18 years and older. There were 57 people in isolation facilities, while 1,588 were in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings in Trinidad and Tobago, the bodies of three of the four divers who were sucked into a 36-inch underwater crude oil pipeline off Point Pier last Friday have been recovered. The bodies have been sent to the Forensic Science Center where they are to be identified and autopsies will also be conducted. The announcement of the recovery made by Paria Fuel Trading Company in a statement on Monday evening. Christopher Boudram, Faisal Kurban, Rishi Nagasa, Kazim Ali Jr. and Yusuf Henry were doing maintenance work on the pipeline when the tragedy occurred last week. Boudram was rescued that same day by diver Ronald Ramuta, a relative to Kurban. He is in stable condition at the San Fernando General Hospital. Attempts to retrieve the fourth body are still ongoing. On the international scene, Russian armored vehicles keep pouring into Ukraine as forces move closer to the capital. Millions of Ukrainians have fled the country. Al Jazeera Television continues to track the story. Russian armored vehicles keep pouring into Ukraine, with one convoy stretching 60 kilometers. They are heading to Ukraine's capital, Kyiv. These people look on in fear as Russian troops make their way through the southern city of Kherson, also aiming for the capital. People across the country are pleading for the invasion to stop. We want to study. We don't want to be afraid. Stop the war. These students posted online, Und nicht Angst haben. begging in several different languages for an end to the conflict. Millions of people have fled to the western city of Lviv, some to be reunited with their families and loved ones, while others can only wait and hope. Ukrainian forces are putting up a strong resistance. These Russian tankers were destroyed just northeast of the capital. And here, a Russian missile platform in northern Kyiv is blown up by a drone. President Volodymyr Zelensky is calling for a no-fly zone over Ukraine to stop Moscow's bombardment, a request rejected by the U.S. And as the missiles and bombs continue to fall, the front lines edge closer to the heart of Ukraine. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.